Hey, welcome back to Chuck's Tuesday Tips. Today we're doing something kind of uh, different, but you might run into this once in a while. Um, if you've ever got stuck with a mount that you never got paid for, um, once in a while you can get lucky. And I had a client come in who found a set of antlers shot in Ojai in the 40 with the tag and everything. And uh, he was saying, gee, it'd be really neat to mount this buck just for the history of it, but I don't have the, I didn't shoot it, and I don't want to spend a lot of money. And I said, well, hey, today's your lucky day. If you want to go with a upright traditional on something which would match how they would have done it in the 40s anyway, I just happened to have one that I got stuck with. What we're going to do is pop the horns off to this and put these ones on. And we can do that because I only mounted this buck last year. I know the tan, I know where I sewed everything up, and I know we can do it. Another thing I want to talk about is it's too bad we don't have a blacklist for customers. Because this particular people stiffed me with three mounted deer heads, two Europeans, and an elk, and I have three kids in the freezer. Um, then they went to Colorado, shot 10 more deer as a group this year, or last season. Took him to another taxidermist who thinks he's going to win. And uh, he's going to end up in the same boat as I am. And uh, it's, I wish we could say Guillermo Rangel's name, but we really can't. It wouldn't be ethical or nothing, but, you know, it's just too bad we couldn't do that. Have a list somewhere of problem customers so we'd know when uh, to avoid a jackpot. Another tip that I've found just in my experience, but if a guy's bringing you in tan capes that he says, uh, you know, his taxidermist did this or that, and he's got these tan capes, maybe it's not the taxidermist, maybe it's your client, I don't know. But anyhow, what I've done here real quick, I'm digressing, my buddy doesn't have that much time. I opened up the Y incision here, okay? And then I'm going to take it down a little bit more. Um, Whatever is necessary to uh, to pull the uh, antlers out. Okay, and since, like I said, since I did this, I know where my screws are and everything. And I use a quality tan. That's what I'm always saying. Use a good tan. This is like a, almost two years old, this mount. And look at how, you know, look at how good the tan is still nice and nice and uh, pliable still. And I need something from over here. Oh, no, I don't. Well, if I didn't walk around like a chicken with my head cut off, it wouldn't be Chuck's Tuesday's tips. So, what I want to do is just bust off the mache. I expose the screws. Yeah, it's funny on that last tip, I felt like that. Detective Columbo, when I couldn't find the antler tip. Uh, excuse me, what I do with it? You kids that don't know about Columbo, you gotta watch it sometimes. It's pretty funny. Anyway. Pull those screws out, and we got two more up front. Okay, and there they are. Because we like to float things in Bondo for stability, now we're going to have a little bit of a jackpot. There we go. Look at that. BT-232 standard large. Now. As usual with old antlers, 
it's kind of a really goofy cut. So we're going to have to like float it in Bondo and maybe wedge it up. I didn't have room for four holes. I did three. And one thing too, I might have forgot to mention on my other tips. So they do a little countersink so that the uh, screw will be flush. So now, I'll put this up and let's see how it fits. Let's just hope we get lucky. Oh yeah. Look at that. You get the camera on that to see how it's going to fit perfect. Right? Nothing to it. So I'm not going to do this right now because I got some other stuff to do. But I can bondo this back in, screw it down, put my mache, and just re, re sew my incision. Bingo, bango, bongo. Drive through. You call it the drive through deer. In fact, that's what I'm going to name the tip. Thanks for tuning in to Chuck's Tuesday Tips, and we'll see you soon.